Now, this is the topic of the master's course um, in 15 minutes or so. Because the master's course actually dives deep into blockchain deployment within an enterprise and seeks to help managers learn what are the features what is good about blockchain, what is bad about blockchain, what's difficult, what's easy, that type of thing. So a lot of the information that's in here is really knowledge that I'm going to give you straight out of that master's course, because the guy that put the, that wrote the book that is the basis of this article really is spot on. And the, this particular one is why it matters is the way Beth titled this one. She says, with the right tactics, companies can overcome the organizational, economic, and interoperability challenges of incorporating blockchains into operations. That is almost kind of a negative way to say that there's challenges with blockchain, um, but they can be overcome if you really want to do a blockchain. So you can kind of tell the that basically she's not all that bought into it, but she read this book and she's going to share uh, what the what the book is all about. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to first talk about, you know, what she labels as her barriers. And these are absolutely valid barriers to adoption. First one is the technological front. There, there are challenges with some blockchains. You've got to get a blockchain vendor that chooses the right uh, the right consensus method, because the right consensus method really is the one that either burdens the blockchain and makes it slow, such as the proof of work, which is the slowest of all the consensus methods, to some of the much more innovative consensus methods that are usually used within enterprise blockchains, where the validation of the individual is done based on the account that they hold and that they're given at the time they join the blockchain. So because the people involved in the blockchain are already trusted individuals, the consensus method can be much, much lighter than the consensus method for a public blockchain. So yes, there's a technological challenge and you've got to make sure that you do that piece right. Now, it also mentions you have to select the degree of decentralization and you have to, and then you have to adequately and accurately tokenize the assets that are going to be tracked and uh, distributed throughout the blockchain. Because tokenization in an enterprise blockchain is about two things. It's about paying the people that do the work on the blockchain. And it's also about uh, keeping track of the facts and data that move through the blockchain as well. So yes, on the technological front, there's some key points that you've got to get right when you first plan out how you're going to implement this, the blockchain. And then there's economic concerns. It's got to make sense. It's just got to make sense from a, a financial standpoint. Um, we, we talked a little bit earlier about trade lens being sunset um, after being operating for about five years. Now, the reason it was sunset is because the way it was currently constituted, it wasn't making enough money as an entity by itself to be able to be divorced from Maersk. And Maersk was still having quite a financial burden because of it. And because of that financial burden, when a downturn in shipping happened, they had to cut the budget and trade lens ended up being, being cut as one of those, you know, budget considerations. So it was good while things were going well, and it probably would have lasted well into the several years beyond now had the severe downturn of the recession uh, not happened. So there is a significant economic uh, concern and I'll touch on how you can make sure that economic return actually becomes uh, viable. So in, in a bullet point a little later on. So from an organizational standpoint, there's, there's two ways you can implement a blockchain. It can be tracking just internal things. Um, and we'll talk about those internal things in another bullet point, or it can be used for recruiting other competitors and other people who could use the viability of the blockchain because you use common suppliers or you use common, uh, common people to sell to, or 
all different types of facets of your business. If you're in a common industry, it makes sense to cluster together and cooperate and collaborate as much as possible. Blockchain allows that, but it is a hurdle to get over. Trade Lens, when we watched it, um, it took a it took a the first year to get about the first three or four people, and their biggest competitor, Hawk Hapag Lloyd, didn't join until they saw other people joining and they could be feel safe that Maersk wasn't just collecting their data and using it. They, they needed to see that it was distributed enough uh, that they felt comfortable joining. You know, once they joined, we had a good body of 16 total companies that were part of Trade Lens. But to get to that level of decentralization does take a an organizational shift mentally to be able to adopt on that way. It also takes, you know, an internal uh, stretch to be able to um, adopt. And so you've got to socialize this within the company. So let's, those are the main three challenges that you have that you make sure that you do well at the very beginning before you go launching into the adoption. So that's well written. So here's the seven items that you need to be considerate of uh, in order to move forward. First, you got to find the right use case. If, if all you're adopting blockchain for is the fear of missing out, in other words, my competitor deployed a blockchain and they sound like they're super, super duper technologically advanced, so I better do it. No, you do it because it makes financial sense. You do any IT project because it makes financial sense. The financial benefit of, of adopting is significant enough to warrant the expense and the time and the effort that you're going to put forward to deploy a blockchain. So it's important that you get the use case right. The next is create a strategy for your legacy systems. This system is going to have to collaborate with the rest of the systems in your organization. So if you have an accounting system in your organization, and this particular software is going to manage your supply chain and there's costs and costs associated with managing your supply chain, such as late products or, uh, or costs involved in getting shipping, overnight shipping or something on a late product coming to you. Any one of a number of things, they have to bolt in with your legacy system and talk and collaborate. So, You've got to have a good strategy that, that lays out your critical systems and says the information that we're going to put in the blockchain came from this system and this system interacted with all these other systems. Therefore, the blockchain also has to interact with those systems and you have to build your plan with that in mind. You have to establish whether or not it's going to have an internal focus or an external. Here's an example of an internal focus where they say proving certain processes such as safety steps. So let's say you've got a critical safety inspection arm of your business. Uh, Boeing, for example, in military has certain inspection points that are mandated by the government on all of their uh, gear that we sell them, whether it be a helicopter or a fighter jet or a trainer jet or any of those things. They've got certain mandated inspections that have to be passed. And blockchain would be perfect for all of the, that data to be collected and collated in an immutable record that could then reside on the server to be pulled up anytime um, the military inspector comes and wants to take a look at our inspection logs. Now, commercial inspection logs are important as well. Commercial also has a full safety arm that they have to make sure and provide documentation that all of the planes were put together in a specific order according to the plan. And if any rework had to be done, all that had to be documented. I mean, if a plane goes down, we've got to show that the plane was well built and put together. And if it wasn't, if there was a problem with the plane and we knew about it, the liability goes one way or another and would come back to Boeing if we couldn't show adequate records. So internally, there's a lot of business cases that could be said for collecting data in a blockchain type of uh, data structure. Externally, healthcare records have been done a lot. Uh, there's a lot of hospitals, especially a big one in Japan, 
where most of the country of Japan is all linked together with a healthcare system that has collaborative record keeping and through the private key of the individual, that person can give a particular doctor access to all of their records with just a few uh, strokes on their, uh, on their cell phone. So it's really, really cool. I did another article on that in, in, uh, on the channel. So there's, there's insurance companies, payers, specialists, all kinds of people. So you need to establish whether or not the particular blockchain you're implementing is going to be internal or external. Um, recommendation would be deploy an internal one first. Find out how this creature works that's a blockchain. Find out what doesn't work. Find out and learn through an internal one first, and then you can uh, get um, deploy an external one. Do a cost-benefit analysis. Um, that goes right along with the uh, find the right use case. If you find the right use case, it'll have a good cost-benefit ratio the cost will be less than the expected benefit. Now, I would not advise anybody to jump off the agile boat here and do a cost benefit analysis that was so detailed it's going to be exactly this or it's over budget. A cost benefit analysis should be a, a ROM, so to speak, where, where you find out, you know, in rough order of magnitude, whether there's enough benefit on one side to justify the costs on the other side. Then you have to socialize the project within your own company. So you've got to be able to retrieve the right people out of the organizations that can help and give the right kind of expertise as to the kind of business that needs to function with the blockchain so that they can uh, participate and help. Okay. Then, you know, we're not going back to the days of rapid application development, but learning from pilots we know is a very effective method. Uh, where you can put out a prototype and learn from those prototypes as you start deploying uh, bits and pieces and automate certain pieces and parts of your business. So learning from pilots becomes a very significant uh, piece of the puzzle as well, especially if you're going to stick to the agile methodology. You can bust it up into small, smaller pieces of the blockchain and implement certain parts um, that need to be automated within within your company. And I love this last one. You know, we're all in IT here. We're all friends, right? So the next one says, don't start with IT. In other words, don't bring your, your favorite blockchain expert IT person in there to tell you how you're going to do it. Um, basically, it needs to be an MIS function or a management of information systems function, which is a business function. So basically what you need to do is you have to have a good business case. You have to do your pencil sharpening to figure out what this blockchain is going to do for you. And if you figure out well what it's going to do for you, then you bring in IT and say, we'd like to see blockchain technology addressing this issue or these issues. And then you bring in IT as your, your, your collaborative partner to enable the blockchain and enable the project from that point forward. So that becomes an incredibly important thing. So basically you've done the other six, well, not learning from pilots, but you've done the five prior to learning from pilots and, and bringing in information technology to do the things the way they're supposed to be done. And you'll, you should end up being successful after the end of the end of the journey. So, yeah, this is such a paradigm shift going from using relational databases, whatever data storage method you have mm -hmm. to a blockchain that you can't do it just from the IT side. This is like going from waterfall to agile and not letting management know. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't work. That doesn't work at all. The same thing here. You can't change over to blockchain without first getting the management to understand what this new paradigm is. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, by the way, if we look up the book that he's taught, that it was taken out of, um, Enterprise Strategy for Blockchain is the book. It was published just last year in October. So it's got some good up-to-date, hopefully relevant information. I've looked at the table of contents in the book and it appears to address all the issues that I'm concerned about when I'm teaching the class. 
So, uh, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and pick up the book and read through it and see if it's uh, uh, the next book for the master. <laughs>